Well, it's kind of a follow-up to yesterday when I was talking about uh, knives, but it's partly to do with this pruner, too. This Baco. Now, I have been using that for cutting down the hemp plants. And it's interesting, you know, in that video I left the comments open. Uh, sometimes that's handy. This is that Victoria Knox. But one of the things I kept getting recommended, you know, a couple, three times, was uh, Baco made a saw called a Laplander. And people seem to be very happy with that. So, You know, my theory, what I wanted one for, you know, so it locks open and it locks closed. Uh, a lot of times on the road grader, you know, I'm working some real back roads. And <laughs> a lot of times there's overhanging trees. And it never fails that there'll be these branches, no bigger than like that, you know, that will hit my mirrors. And, and always knock the mirrors out of alignment. So then I have to stop, realign the mirrors. This gets to be annoying after a while. So, this would be very easy to carry along, weighs very little. Then I can trim them little branches down. You know, I've thought about one of these before. They tend to run a little high. You know, for like the silky ones and stuff. And, you know, I'm not that fanatic about a saw. But this was a pretty good deal. You know, the prices on this kind of thing can be all over the place, so you do have to watch that. But this came to 3402, the saw and a Baco knife. Now, this had me curious. You know, because really that's uh, basically the same as a uh, Mora. You know, they're in a hell of a lot different. But there is a, an interesting thing about those Swedish knife companies. Well, all the Swedish companies, they tend to uh, kind of work together. Um, you know, like, like Mora, originally it was, you know, it's a region. And there could be several people making knives, and I know like it was the local shoemaker that was making the sheath for the knife. You know, but they kind of cooperated. If somebody needed blades, all right, you know, you'd send the blade blanks over. So this is really the same as the Mora Carpenter. It's slightly thinner, you know, I have the robust. This is slightly thinner than the robust. But a good solid knife and a good solid case. And it has that, you know, button thing, which I do like because I, all my pants have got that button on the side pocket for that purpose. So the two, you know, like I say, for 3402, that's with tax. Came out of Florida, a free state, so $1.62 of that was tax, but it stays out of the social estates, so that's a good thing. Now the one thing I was going to mention though, you know I really like these, I, I talked about these Victor Knock knives. Uh, the one thing that they could do, this is like a six dollar knife. You know, that's fine. Uh, I, I'm not a, a snob knife-wise. I'm not, uh, you know, I, the, the, I like good quality, but I like it at a reasonable price. 
and Victor Knox tends to do that. But the one thing I would like to see him do with these as a, you know, utility type kitchen food prep knife. This is the kind of thing that gets thrown in a drawer. It would be very handy if they were to make a a slip-on blade protector, uh, not as elaborate as something like this. Doesn't even have to have that. Uh, just a, a simple thing that would slide. They've already got indentions here, so it could really just pop on. You know, little piece of plastic, about that long. You know, if you're going to charge me a dollar more for the knife, I'd gladly pay it. You know, it's, it's the simplicity of it that I like, and the economy. You know, you don't have the complexity that a folder involves. And it would just be a lot safer in a, a drawer. You know, like a lot of times, I know as kids, we, our kitchen knives, our, our paring knives and stuff were always in a, you know, like a silverware drawer. Well, you rummage around in there with one of these as sharp as a razor. You know, you don't want that. But if you just had that little slip-on plastic case, you know, it would be a very simple addition to these that would make it, uh, you know, and certainly now you can injection mold something like that it would cost you very little. It costs you hardly anything more than what this little plastic envelope they send with comes, you know. But it would do the job much better. You know, then you could you could carry it in a purse or even in your pocket, and it would be safe. Like I say, I don't think of it like a sheath knife. You you would need to have that elaborate of a setup, but just something that would slip on, protect the blade, and protect everything else in the area from the blade, including your fingers. You know, it makes sense to me. I don't know why, you know, it, it, it couldn't cost you more than a dollar more. So, rather than a six dollar knife, okay, I'll pay seven. Just a little extra. You know, otherwise, good practical, like I say, all-purpose kind of food prep knife. But, would be a little better, you know. It would be so easy to do. I, mean, I could make a I can make one very easily out of a, a piece of plastic tubing, flatten it out, you know, just make it so it'll catch when it goes in here, got it made. But it would make the knife much more functional and safer. Otherwise, it's a very good knife. You know, like these, when they go into the case, they kind of clip. So when I see these, you can get a little something there. But really, I mean, it's, it's exactly like a Mora. But being together as a kit made the price very reasonable. And, you know, if a kit had these two and a ball of twine, oh, you could build quite a shelter. You know, that's a lot of usefulness right there. And when I do like the arms, that you won't lose it as easy. I don't know, you know, it seems like a practical, good price for, for the item. Well, test her out. I've got a tomato here. Oh yeah, she'll slice a tomato. But that blade is thicker. I think the more, oh, the more you could really slice her thin, or that Victor Knox, because <laughs> that's a very thin blade. Uh, I think you could fillet a fish with this blade. But that little slight improvement or accessory kind of thing, I don't know. I mean, it could be that maybe they make such a thing and I just don't know about it. But it would be a good idea. And like I say, it can't cost too much. I gladly pay a dollar more for it. Yeah, I think that'll be a perfectly functional knife. 
And the saw, you know, like I say, I've thought about carrying one of these before. And I tell you, this thing is light. Though, it does appear to be reinforced. I think that's plastic, though. Yeah, it's got to be plastic. It's got a slight amount of flex in the handle, but very little. And a very thin blade, which is good. You don't need to be taking a thin, thick cut out. You know, I think the blade on my Swiss Army knife is thicker than that, because that's 50 thousandths, because I use that for gauging <laughs> chainsaw uh, bars. Yeah. And I, I see, you know, like I say, these are evidently very popular. Like I say, it was recommended over and over. But also, uh, I see a lot of people that are making leather sheaths that are made to fit these. You know, actually the way it locks them, you can throw this in a pocket or, you know, like one of your player's pockets in your pants. But good price. And, there again, not supporting the social estate.